Hi y'all and welcome to Nerd Studio and welcome to the second video in our series on reloading hardcast bullets. Stay tuned. When you're reloading you've got all kinds of different options for your projectile all the way up from the most expensive uh, personal defense ammo and down to soft lead bullets that you mold yourself at home uh, and really anything in between. When you're considering what projectile to use, really you're weighing the function and the cost together to figure out what it is that, uh, you know, fits for you. For us, we wanted something that we could shoot at the range for target practice that, uh, you know, would hit a, metal, a steel target and disintegrate, basically. And where we landed was hard cast bullets. Some people would call them hard cast lead bullets, although that's kind of misleading because they're not primarily made out of lead. Uh, they are really an alloy with some lead in it, typically stuff like silver, tin, there's a bunch of different things that they that they use when they make a hard cast lead bullet. So let's talk about the difference between lead and hard cast. Well, you guessed it, the hard cast is harder. Why do you want a harder bullet? Well, the lead being soft, as it goes through the barrel, it can leave deposits in the rifling of the barrel. And actually fairly quickly that can cause accuracy problems because it fills up the rifling and the rifling uh, causes your projectile to spin and that improves your accuracy. And back when they shot uh, uh, unrifled muskets, they were only good to a certain distance and they weren't very accurate. The rifling is what gives you the accuracy. So if you fill that up with lead, you've got problems. In some cases, particularly with, uh, with like polygonal barrels and, and different kinds of rifling, it can really become a hazard. So. Lead bullets are a problem for that. You, you have to be really on top of your cleaning if you're going to be shooting lead. A hard cast bullet doesn't leave behind those deposits because it's much harder. Let's talk, let's talk about how much harder. The way they measure hardness uh, on projectiles is using something called the Burnell scale. And uh, that actually was uh, uh, thought up by a Swedish engineer named Johan August Burnell uh, back in, the, in 1900. What this basically does, they use a uh, what almost looks like a drill press, and they take whatever their uh, their medium is with a bullet in our case, and they've got a, a pin coming off that thing. And I'll show a little video of uh, or an image or something here to kind of bring this home. But it's got a rounded point on the end, and they press on uh, they they give a known pressure on the on the material that they're testing, and it leaves a dent, an indentation on the material. And then they can measure that indentation and compare one to another. And Burnell thought up a scale that would allow you to steadily measure different kinds of material. Lead itself scores four on the Burnell scale. A cast lead bullet, in particular the ones from Lucky 13 that we use, scores 16. So it's four times harder than a, cat, than a regular lead bullet. And there you go, it doesn't leave the fouling behind. One thing you need to know about hard cast bullets, they need to be lubricated. So whether you're buying them from the factory, which you can buy them lubed or unlubed from the factory, or you're, you're casting them at home, which you can do, uh, before you load them, you need to make sure there's lube on them one way or another. We just buy them from Lucky 13, already lubricated, and it saves us that extra step. You will hear an old myth out there about shooting lead bullets through, through a Glock because of the polygonal rifling. While it's true that I would not shoot a regular lead bullet out of a Glock, that's not the case for hard cast bullets. And Buffalo bore has a really good uh, essay on why that is the case. And I'll put a link in the, in the uh, video description below so you can go read that. They just did a bang up job explaining it. And it's worth, the, it's a couple of paragraphs and it's worth the read. Well, what's the cost savings using a hard cast bullet? Let me break it down for you. So we buy, from Lucky 13, we buy 500, 125 grain uh, cast lead projectiles in nine millimeter from them. That's uh, 0.356 is the diameter. That costs us $32 for 500, and that's going to be what uh, $64 for a thousand. There's a little bit of tax. We live in North Carolina, that's where Lucky 13's out of, and free shipping on their cast bullets, on their hard cast bullets. It's awesome. That's one of the things that made us uh, choose Lucky 13 over others. They're less expensive in general, with still a good quality product, but the free shipping is hard to beat. Uh, we're paying about two cents for our primers. We're using CCI primers. Uh, we use bullseye powder in our 9mm loads, and that's running us about $0.02 cents per round. And that puts our cost per round, we're using recycled brass, the brass we're pulling off our range, at a little over $0.10 cents per round. And that's re a really attractive price for target loads. Let's talk about how we uh, arrive at the load that we want. Now again, I'm not a reloading expert, so I'm not trying to teach you how to reload here. I just want to talk a little bit 
about the process that we go through to pick the load that we want and test it to make sure that it's doing what we want it to do. We start by choosing our projectile. In this case, it's 125 grain hard cast bullet from Lucky 13. Uh, we want to use bullseye powder because that makes sense for us, uh, the cost, and we like the way that it dispenses out of our powder drops. And we like CCI primers because they're easy to get our hands on. So we went out and searched around for recipes that allowed us to use those components and come up with a load that travels at a certain velocity. Um, so you're typically seeing that in your recipes is the feet per second. From there, we look at the powder recommendation. We start at the low end of the powder recommendation for that load, and then we load a couple up at that, at that level. Then we up the powder, usually a tenth of a grain from there, and we load a few more and up a tenth of a grain until we get about in the middle ground of where they recommend the powder be for that recipe. And typically they'll give you a range, a high and a low. So we try and go from the lowest to about the middle, and then we take those down and test them. When we test our loads, we look at, in the recipe, what they expect the velocity of that load will produce. So you'll see it there in feet per second. I think uh, for this particular load, the recipe we were looking at was uh, about 1130 feet per second. So how do you test that? Well, you use one of these, you use a chronograph. This is ours, this is from Competition Electronics. Uh, it's the Pro Chrono Digital. Pretty cool, Does uh, lots has lots of cool features. But in the end, what you're really looking for is an average velocity over a, a series of rounds that you fire. And basically what you do to set this guy up, um, it comes with the body. You can put this on a table or we use a tripod. And then you insert these poles like so. And then what you're trying to do is when you shoot, you want to shoot about in the top third is the best experience that we've seen. If we shoot lower, it tends to not be able to, to measure the speed of the bullet. And really all this is doing, the bullet passes in between these markers and the device is able through the little holes down here to measure when the projectile passes here and here and figure out how many feet per second it's traveling. It does come with the uh, diffusers. These go on top here. And really what that is, it diffuses the light over these holes in case you've got really bright sunlight. That bright sunlight can interfere with its ability to uh, track the bullet through here. So in really bright sunlight, you use the diffusers. So let's take a look at the, the readout here as we're, as we're testing this load. Now we tested over uh, several different barrel lengths by shooting onto different guns. We shot out of uh, the Glock 17 the Glock 19, the Glock 26, and the Glock 43. And that gave us a really good uh, sense of how fast the bullet was traveling. We were able to compare that to the velocity that was given in the recipe. We're pretty happy. We came out at about 1,100 feet per second out of a four inch barrel, and that was about what the recipe was expecting. All right, let's have some fun.
So after testing the, the velocity, really what we do is just a rough accuracy test, and there's nothing scientific about that. Uh, I typically use my Glock 19, take 10 or 15 rounds, put it in a target, and I'm familiar enough with that gun and my shooting skill to know where those bullets should hit if the round is, is correct. And that's what we did here. Looked pretty good. We were really happy with this, uh, with this particular load and with the Lucky 13 bullets. They perform just like we'd want them to and do the job pretty much perfectly. Another thing we like to do is to calculate the muzzle energy. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, the, the muzzle energy is roughly uh, reflects how much damage that you could expect that projectile to do. And there's a lot of factors there. The type of the projectile, you know, if, if you've watched any of the other uh, bullet tests that I've done, really does affect the damage. But in the sense of the muzzle energy, it tells you comparing one round to another uh, what the effective force on your target will be. And it allows you to compare how that bullet would perform to another load that you do. And why is that important? Well, um, if, you, if you go back to high school math, uh, you should remember force equals mass times acceleration. So the force that an object produces is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. And acceleration is the velocity of the object over time. So force equals mass times acceleration. That means if you have a really uh, massive object moving slowly and a less massive object moving faster, you could potentially create more force from the lighter object simply because it's moving faster. So calculating that would allow you to, to compare, say, uh, a 45 load that you're doing against a 9mm load to determine which you would prefer. Uh, 45s have uh, more recoil than a 9mm, so if you can get the same performance out of a 9mm, it might make sense to go that way. At least that's how we do it here. So let me talk a little bit about how this is calculated for uh, ballistics. So you take your velocity that you got off your chronograph. In our case, it was 1100 or 1110 average uh, feet per second. The weight of your bullet in grains, ours is 125 grains, and I did the math, that gave us 336 foot-pounds at the muzzle. In the end, the actual equation you need to use is a little more uh, complicated than force equals mass times acceleration. And I did some digging to figure out what the equation actually was, and just booking around, found, found the actual formula on Wikipedia, because you're dealing with uh, a bullet that's measured in grains, and you're dealing with feet per second in your velocity and then you're coming out with foot-pounds of pressure and I wanted to know really what was the math so I could do the calculation myself and then the more I dug into it the more I said I could write an app for that so I did and I'm going to share it with you so you're, you're seeing it up here this is my official nerd gun south muzzle energy uh, calculator and I'll put the link in the description of the video below so you can go up and, and do this yourself now keep in mind there's a ton of these things out there but none of them have my logo on it other than me. Uh, one of the things I really did like about it, I stole the, the actual formula right from Wikipedia. One of the things I really liked about that is they did account for the force of gravity. And um, I'm on a bit of a science jag listening to uh, lectures from uh, the great courses on different subjects in science. So I thought it was kind of cool that this one took into account uh, the force of gravity on your acceleration. So that's in there too. Uh, if you care about it, I put a link to the to the Wikipedia article and actually uh, put their image of what the uh, actual formula is here on the website. So uh, feel free to go up and play with that and uh, have fun. I hope you find that useful. Well, there you go, folks. Um, cast bullets, hard cast bullets. That's what we're using here at the studio. They make a, a great uh, a great round for use on the range. Uh, now they are uh, what some people would consider a lead bullet. So if you're going to an indoor range, they may not permit you to use these bullets at the range. There's uh, concerns about lead contamination. And I don't know about you, but even a jacketed bullet, when it hits the steel backstop that you find at an indoor range, vaporizes. What I think they're concerned about is, is lead going down the range itself, vaporizing on the way down. And frankly, a hard cast bullet, I don't believe really does that. So, but rules are rules and you got to follow them. We shoot outside, so we can shoot all of the hard cast we want, and that's where we've landed. We're really impressed with Lucky 13. What a great price. Um, the product is fantastic. It's, uh, their, their bullets are consistent, and we're quite happy. Good job, Lucky 13. All right, folks, there you go. Hard cast bullets and, uh, and a little bit on the chronograph. Hope you found it useful. 
Always remember, anyone can shoot. And really, with a little bit of money, you can load your own and test your own bullets, too. Anyone can shoot and have fun. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you.